Hello friends, welcome to our channel Google Galaxy. Today we are going to discuss about the chapter coordination compounds. To understand the significance of coordination compounds, let me uh, give uh, give you the example. Suppose we will mix ferrous cyanide. First of uh, first of all, this chapter is basically somehow uh, different from the other chapters of chemistry. Or I can say somehow difficult for you. It's all up to you how you take this chapter. When we talk about the coordination compounds, to know its significance, let me mix the ferrous cyanide. Let me mix ferrous cyanide with the potassium cyanide. With the potassium cyanide. When we mix these two compounds in a beaker, after mixing it, we let him dry. Evaporation takes place. How we can write it? We can write it as evaporation takes place. This evaporation causes the dryness and makes this makes the resultant when we mix these two compounds we will get the output of potassium ferrocyanide potassium ferrocyanide these compounds are difficult to learn but you need to understand the nomenclature as we going to discuss later in this chapter first of all you have to just look this example we take two salts echo solution of salt first one is ferrous cyanide second one is potassium cyanide when we mix these two in a beaker and evaporate it to the dryness the residue left behind as the tea leaves in the the residue left behind and that residue is known as potassium ferrocyanide when we dissolve this compound in the water when we dissolved in the water what we found we found the formation of ions formation of ions formation of ion in this way you need to learn a term over here that the species which is enclosed in square bracket is known as complex salt while you are attempting any question any type of attend uh, when you attend any type uh, any lecture on coordination compound the species enclosed in square bracket is al is always known as complex ion any kind of species it may be it may be uh, NH3 this species is enclosed in bracket so we call it as complex sign any kind of species while attempting or while attending this uh, chapter of coordination compound this species is found to be very stable and does not give any test while and does not give any test in the laboratory that we used the ferrous sign that we use ferrous sign into a mixture so these kinds of salt which do not confirm the test of any ion in a mixture are known as coordination compounds if a compound gives the presence of any ion we are mixing in a mixture it means it does not belongs to coordination compound it belongs to double salt it belongs to double salt so from now we we say there are two types of salt one is coordination 
second one is double salt double salt give the test of give the presence of ion present in a in a result molecule while the coordination compound does not confirm the test of any ion present in a molecule since it since it must have to be unstable but but but, uh, but, but we found we found it very stable instead of unstable and also uh, the two things we found first one is the square bracket compound is known as complex sign the second one is this square bracket compound does not give test of test of presence of any ion presence of ion it does not give the test of cyanide present in a molecule it does not give a test of ferrous present in a molecule and the third one is it found to be very much stable very much stable so these are the three characteristics which are found in the coordination compound if from now onwards wherever you see a compound within a square bracket you called it as complex sign okay what are its characteristics it does not give presence of any ion if it gives the test of presence of any ion it is known as double sort not not as coordination compound and these are very much stable in nature there are numerous examples of coordination compound few of them are this compound is known as coordination compound when we dissolved in water it was split into ions when we dissolved in water this this complex ion separates from the sulfate ion so this is known as complex ion so it has the same properties as we discussed before another example we are having the no doubt these these compounds are complex while reading out so further uh, after few uh, after few minutes we will discuss the the iupac name of these compound how to spell it so this is the whole about the coordination compound this is the starting part and what about the double salt as i told before that the double salts are those which give the test of presence of ion present in a molecule few of the salts you need to learn uh, first one is mohor salt mohor salt it is been since it is derived by the mohor sir one of the finest teacher one of the finest scientist in in, in the field of chemistry they found they prepare a salt or we can say they found this salt wherever you found this combination you will at once to identify this salt is named as mohor salt similarly we are having another ferric alum ferric alum is the another compound you have to learn as i did during my time i also did the same whenever you will need you will need to learn this whole compound similarly if someone told you we have used the chrome chrome alum you will at once say that we use the combination of potassium sulfate chromium sulfate and crystallize with the molecules of water these are the examples of which are commonly used while attempting any ncert questions and we will use these salts in further discussion this is all about the double salt and the coordination compounds this is the starting now after after this lecture after this uh, now we are going to discuss the few terms related to the coordination compounds let's discuss 
now let's discuss few terms related to the coordination compounds without these terms you are unable to understand any concept we are going to further discuss first let's talk about the first term in the coordination compounds is coordination identity coordination entity as I told you before that the any complex enclosed or I can say any species enclosed in square bracket is known as coordination entity it may be it may be another we are having the example of we, we have to just look up, look for this square bracket if square bracket is not available then it means it's not a coordination entity we are also called it as coordination sphere there are two names we are also known as coordination sphere a few teachers say coordination sphere while other coordination entity we are talking about the coordination entity any square bracket wherever we see we call it as coordination entity and another, and another name is complex ion in this what we need to uh, what we see that the central atom that is ferric ferrous is surrounded by the six cyanide molecules six cyanide molecules similarly we are having another example of coordination entity this one is another example of coordination entity but we see that the four molecules are cobalt is surrounded the nickel atom central atom we, we call it as metal ion metal atom or ion bonded to fixed number of ions or molecules these and uh, these are called as coordination entity the second term we are having is central atom central atom these terms are very much important for further use in coordination entity in coordination entity this is coordination entity this is coordination entity the atom or ion to which fixed number of ions are bonded together are bonded in the definite geometrical arrangement geometrical arrangement may be sphere may be octahedral may be tetragonal it, it depends upon the, it depends upon the type of coordination here central atom here ferrous is acting as a central atom nickel is acting as a central atom these compounds are bounded to the central atom in a particular geometrical shape so giving an example that here we are having iron and nickel these compounds are known as central atom or ion central atom or ion we call it as central atom these central atoms are are also known as Lewis acids there are number of terms to represent these central atoms we need to learn each term next we are having the ligands ligands what are ligands the the ion the ions this is central atom the ions or molecule this is molecule this is molecule bound to the central atom in a coordination entity in a coordination entity coordination entity is represented by this kill bracket this is the uh, central atom this is the bounded atoms we are talking about the bounded atoms the bounded atoms stable this 
central atom and this bounded atoms or a group of molecule or a group of atoms within a square bracket are known as ligand ends these may be simple lines we can say which which are bounded with the central atoms are known as ligand ends these ligand ends may be simple lines may be simple lines how chlorine bromine small molecules small molecules how we can say taking an example of molecules h2o and h3 if i am having a compound of now this this a molecule within a square bracket is known as coordination entity second name is coordination sphere we also called it as ion complex ion and the copper is acting as a central atom it is also known as lewis acid this nh3 molecule these molecules spore make this table this copper so this so this nh3 is acting as a ligand ends that is bounded with the central atom this copper is bounded with the central atoms it may be a single molecule it may be a number of molecules if i just say that the ligand end spores by us that this ligand ligand end spores ligand end spores by single donor atom we call it as uni dentate if it is spored by the two donor atoms if it is two donor atoms we call it as we call it as di dentate if it is donated by several donor atoms several we call it as poly dentate so what are ligand ends ligand ends are the group of atoms which sports the which bound the metal line which bounds the central metal line there are numerous example with these ligand ends next we are having the the fourth one we are having the homoleptic and heteroleptic homo leptic and hetero leptic complexes when we say the complexes in which a metal is bounded by only one kind of donor group when we say only one type of donor group as i say here the donor group is cobalt here donor here donor group is cyanide ferric and nickel is acting as a central metal and this square bracket is known as coordination entity ligand ends may be uh, may uh, may donate single atom may donate uh, donating if if the donating if the donating atom is single single present or we can say two donating atoms we call it as didentin if this uh, ligand ends spores by the single donor atom we call it as uni dentate several atoms polydentate if only one type of donor group is present in a complex i'll repeat again complexes in which a metal is bounded to only one kind of donor group giving an example here metal is in cobalt co 
this is known as homoleptic because there is a there is only a one kind of one kind of donor group is present in a complex so we called it as homoleptic what about the heteroleptic complexes in which only we not use the word only in which metal bound by more than one kind of donor group we called it as hetero hetero leptic give an example i'll give you the example if the cobalt is combined with the two different more than one kind of donor group may be same may be different basically these are different kind of group we called it as we called it as heteroleptic next we are having the coordination number next we are having the coordination number coordination is some somehow is uh, some sometimes it is donated by the cn the coordination number of a metal or a complex can be defined as can be defined as the number of ligand ends the num the number of ligand ends i'll this word is very much important directly this this word is very much important number of ligand ends directly bonded with the bonded with the central atom if it is not directly bonded with the central, uh, central atom we uh, it means the coordination number will be the different for example if i am having the complex sign or i'll say we have the two example over here we are having the two examples these two for this for these two examples the coordination number of platinum and the nickel would be 6 and the 4 for platinum it would be 6 why is it so because chlorine is directly bonded with the central atom platinum why it is 4 because ammonia is acting as a neutral ligand and it is directly bonded with the central atom nickel one thing to be note that the coordination number of central atom this is the most important point the coordination number of central atom is determined only by sigma bonds only by sigma bonds one thing is directly attached the second one is we need to count the sigma bonds formed by the ligand end with the central atom pi bonds between the ligand end and the central atom are not count are not counted for this purpose for finding out the coordination number pi bond is not allowed this is fifth one our coordination number next we are having the oxidation number the oxidation number of central atom as the charge it would carry if all the ligand ends are removed with the electron pair with the electron pair that will shared with the central atom let's discuss hello we are talking about the oxidation number over here i have written i have already written the few compounds 
the oxidation number can be calculated in the same way as we did in the redox friction or I can say I, as we do in the redox friction few things you need to learn that the neutral ligands have no charge neutral ligands here NH3 is neutral ligand it has no charge so we write zero for it when we talk about the anionic part it carries the negative charge because while writing when the this compound is decomposed into two parts cyanide is having a single negative charge it means it, it is having the excess of electrons so we called it as anionic ligand it carries the negative charge while the ligands while the cationic ligands have the positive charge we, we are going to discuss one by one in this whole examples uh, knowing all these factors let us calculate the oxidation number oxidation state or oxidation number of this metal line of this metal ion in some cases here for Fe we will write X because we need to identify the oxidation number of this ferrous we will write 6 6 since this cyanide is having the one negative charge so we will multiply with the 1 and after calculating we will get minus 3 is equals to minus 3 why is equals to minus C because minus 3 is present and, have, and the whole complex is having a particular kind of charge that is minus 3 so we will write it as minus 3 if it is plus 3 is present over here we will write equal to plus 3 if, if it is neutral for this neutral we will write it as 0 so finding the value of x for finding the value of x if we we will write it as x is equals to minus 3 plus 6 is equals to plus 3 is the oxidation number for the ferrous when we talk about this complex ion since I told you that the ammonia is having the neutral so for copper we will write x for ammonia we will write it as 4 multiply by 0 why 0 because ammonia is a neutral is equals to plus 2 the whole complex charge we will write, uh, we will write on the right hand side calculating the value of x we will get the plus 2 so plus 2 is the oxidation number of this copper when we talk about the silver so I'll write again is equals to minus 1 or calculating the value of x we will get the value x is equals to minus 1 plus 2 is equals to plus 1 this is oxidation number of silver now cobalt is acting as a neutral atom so we will write zero for it nickel we need to calculate oxidation number of nickel we need to calculate four zero so the oxidation number of this complex is why will write zero why will write zero over here because the the whole complex ion is having no charge so we will write is equals to 0 if it is having the charge it may be 2 plus 1 with 3 plus we will write it as minus 3 plus 2 minus 1 so calculating we will write or x is equals to 0 so after getting the x equals to 0 we will say that this complex the oxidation number of this complex sign is this at uh, this uh, metal line the oxidation number of this metal line is 0 the oxidation number is normally represented by this square bracket follows by the name of complex entity thank you